Jason, chill! In this episode, we are going to discuss Connor McGregor tweaking out. The name of this chapter is Connor McGregor Tweak. We're going to watch it together and we're going to discuss it. Then we're going to talk about my first time smoking weed. That's right. It was not fun and it made me kind of feel like doing the Connor McGregor Tweak, the McTweaker. It made me feel like doing the Connor McTweaker Tweak out. I think we're going to keep this episode calm, chill. We're going to keep it smooth. Sit back, grab your favorite breakfast blunt or dinner blunt or lunch blunt or whatever blunt you prefer, unless you don't use blunts. In which case, have some wine, unless you don't drink. In that case, get yourself some carrot sticks and some hummus. Well, everybody, as far as I know, likes carrots and hummus. And if you don't, whatever. You're just being difficult. Anyway, enjoy the video. You know, I was, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance. And I just... When I first watched this, I thought Connor was kind of doing just as, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. I thought it was a little weird, but it was like, as a matter of fact. As I watched, I realized that it was not as a matter of fact as it was a Connor McTweak. Let's move on. Just took it. You know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made. And that's it. We had a good. Jake Gyllenhaal was looking at him like, oh my gosh, where is this going? And then Connor makes the joke that, he, you know, he's made however many bar fights. And then Jake Gyllenhaal like does a... a sigh of relief through his nose because Conor McGregor actually said something coherent and he was thinking oh maybe this interview is not going to look as bad as it looks to me right now but it does let's move on back and forth <laughs> amazing yeah. stunt, the stunt team Garrett Warden and Steve Brown and they were phenomenal with us they gave us free reign and we've done a good job for me what was hard was Okay, so I, I hear a lot of theories on what's going on with Connor here. And my theory is different than what I'm hearing. Most of what I'm hearing is this is him on Coke, this is him on something more than Coke, or this is withdrawals. And I think it's a combination of a bunch of things. Connor tries to cover his tracks in different ways. I saw a previous interview where he's kind of like, he's all sped up and he was talking about how strong the coffee was. So he's trying to use the coffee to explain his behavior. So he does that in almost any interview where he's tweaking out. So actually, I'll save my theory after we kind of get through the video. And then I'll tell you the story of me smoking the shake on in the bottom of a swag bag in the early 2000s and it was my first time smoking weed and it was scary and i did the conor mcgregor shoulder tweak it was time consuming 18 hours on set very little rest okay it was strange to me but yes, okay so he's talking about very little rest Okay, so that's because of all the set time on the movie. So when everybody else did their time on the movie and went home or went back to their trailers, Conor McGregor did not. Conor McGregor thought it was time to sniff the booger sugar or have fun and party and do whatever he wants to do, which I'm not judging him. I'm just observing what's happening here and giving my opinion on what I am seeing in front of me. And to me, Conor McGregor just said, because he's on a movie set, it takes up a lot of time, it's very time consuming, and he's not getting a lot of sleep. Yet, Jake Gyllenhaal was on the same movie as the main character and is sitting right next to him, looking chill as a cucumber. 
he is looking at Conor McGregor and thinking to himself, is this human being going to be able to keep himself together enough to be presentable for this interview? Moving on. I was happy to give my input and my all. And Jake, as I said, is a consummate professional. We've done a good job. So that is the video that we've been talking about. Conor McGregor tweak. Being a professional artist that used to tour all over the United States, I would go to state to state, set up my art, set up prints at different festival art festivals and comic book shows or whatever, wherever I wanted to sell my art, wherever there is people I could sell my art, I would set up at. And to prepare for these shows, I'd create a lot of art. And so I'd stay up with my friends uh, who were also artists and coming to the event with me. And we would create art all night, watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, Ghost World, all kinds of crazy movies, listen to good music. It was a good time. But my friends smoked weed and I did not. This is kind of like in the hood, off Telephone Road in Houston. So anybody from Houston that knows Telephone Road, it's not like really the hood, but it's the hood. You know, I'm not saying the hood in a, in a bad way. It's the hood though. You have weed coming in from different areas. The cartel, someone growing it in their freaking uh, water heater closet. Like not the best weed under the best circumstances is available in this area, right? So my friend that smoked weed, he had another friend that would always come over and he'd bring like these giant bags of swag. Now, if you don't know what swag is, swag is weed that is just very, very low quality, grown under poor conditions, usually in a rush, not cured properly, not stored properly, and not the best genetics. So this stuff looks like cow manure full of seeds. And that's what weed was like before nowadays where there are no seeds and it's very potent and they're high quality strains. Also, the swag is usually grown with like pesticides are definitely on it. And then sometimes people mess with it to make it way more so they can sell it for more. That is the unfortunate part of growing up uh, between the 70s and early 2000s with the weed supply, depending on where you were getting it from. Most of it was under those conditions. So yeah, imagine smoking all that at the bottom of a swag bag. It's all the shake. It's all the loose stuff, not even the solid nugs that grew from the tree, but all the shake, all the contaminants, all the extra stuff just shook to the bottom of the bag. And that's what my friends would roll up in a cigar wrap into a blunt and they would smoke that. And then they would be like, hey, Chris, you want to try this? They would always try to pass it to me. And I'm like, I'm good. So one night I was like, screw it. I'll try it. And this is the night that it was rolled from the swaggiest shake ever and i smoked that with my friends and then it was making me spaz out like this i was like is this normal it's making me feel weird and they're like oh you just need to calm down you know it's like it's gonna be fine and i wasn't like freaking out i was just kind of like i just had like I felt like ice was through my veins now it's all the pesticides it's all the it's poorly grown weed the thc is mixed with pesticides who knows what other kind of chemicals and molds or whatever however many hands this stuff pass through, you know, this is now in my system and I'm dealing with it. Now they may be used to that because they smoke all the time and they're smoking that quality stuff all the time. So they get used to it, build up a tolerance for it. Me, not so much, never had it before. Never smoked weed until I was in my thirties. I'm only in my forties now. I thought I was gonna die. Thought I was gonna die. I was spazzing out. I was doing the Conor McGregor shoulder tweak. And we had the tools, we had talent. It's Miller time. It was not Miller time, you know? 
it was not happy times. My point is, is there's lots of things that we could be looking at with Connor here. And none of it is good. <laughs> because even if the best scenario possible, which it's not, is he's just sleep deprived and living off coffee and Red Bulls. That's not good for you either, especially when you're supposed to be thinking about training for a fight happening in June. Not what you're supposed to be doing there. So if he is fighting in June, oh gosh, it's going to take a miracle for him to win. Because think about this. He suffered the worst kind of leg injury you possibly can where the bone becomes completely separated. Remember what it looked like? It was just like a little, it was just hanging. The skin was just holding it together. The bone was no longer holding the leg together. And he got that repaired. You know, that hasn't been that long ago. So he's got that going on. He probably got put on pain meds, steroids. So now he's, you know, he's being controlled through pain meds and trying to wean himself from that probably. And he's on steroids. It's making him feel like a, like a superhero. And he's got all the money in the world. So this recipe is no bueno for his mind state, his mental state. When he was working up to where he is now, he had an unstoppable mental state and he had unstoppable discipline. What we are seeing now is the opposite of all that. So even if he does fight in June with Chandler training like a beast as just part of his regular lifestyle, even anybody, anybody, most fighters that Connor would fight right now are training just as part of their lifestyle. And whereas Connor Connor's doing all these crazy things, it's just like putting his whole mental and physical well-being and health in a whirlwind of chaos. The average MMA fighter may just smoke some weed, maybe drink a little and skip a day or two in training. You know, so he's Connor is not setting himself up for success. He's setting himself up to be to fail and to kind of go and not to go out with a bang, but to go out with like a, a whimper. Like we don't want to see that. It's, it's kind of a sad thing we're seeing now. It's possible that Conor McGregor can prove all of can prove all of this wrong. Any anything can happen. And that's the crazy part about the UFC. That's the crazy that's why we all love it cuz anything can happen. But given the circumstances that we're seeing and to speculate based on the way reality works, it's not looking good. I'm curious what you guys think about it. Do you think we're even going to see Conor McGregor fight again? Or do you think we won't? If I had to guess, I would say yes. But it won't be good. My thoughts are Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier 2 is the last real Conor McGregor fight we will ever see. He might do some exhibition boxing matches. If he gets in, if he does one more in the UFC and fights. Chandler, it's not going to be pretty. Chandler's going to take him out and it's going to be nasty. If I'm wrong, you guys can roast me in the comments. That's fine. But if I'm right, you got to subscribe and like the video and comment and tell me I was right. Like, share, tell your friends. Let's grow the MMA flicks and chill community. And I'll keep working on better content and experimenting with it to entertain you guys while discussing MMA. What are you waiting for? Subscribe. Like my shit. Come on, man. Like my shit, man. Chill. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell. Ring